Yo, 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 welcome everybody. Good evening everyone, welcome back to TCR Trinity. Competitive racing. Well, TCR TJ is the Season 13 Golden Class Champion for Trinity Competitive Racing. Oh, let's go, dude! Yes! Jabbar on the podium! He's on it by a tenth! Gentlemen, uh, gentlemen, not... side by side through one. And side, oh, and see freeze gets a little half spin. Let's fucking go! <laughs> Wheel bumping. DRS Naval, let's do it. And Captain Blade battling it out for position. Captain Blade. Echo, what the f? The McChicken goes around and he also makes a yeah, rewind down the front straight. Oh my god. <laughs> I gotta check the hard rate. Why do we do this? Because of nights like this. Go. Yo, 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 welcome everybody to TCR Trinity Competitive Racing and welcome to the racing. No, this is wrong. This is wrong. This is what am I looking at? Okay, take two. You, you could keep it rolling. Leave that in. Leave that in. <laughs> yes. <laughs> what am I looking at? Blooper, All right, here we go. Re blooper reel. Take two. What a boom. <laughs> I had to clear the throat. Let me grab a little bit of water here. Alright. Yo, yo, yo. Welcome, everybody, to TCR Trinity Competitive Racing, and welcome to episode 11 of the Racing Debrief. TCR's podcast where we combine the world of e-racing, sim racing, and TCR with real life motorsports and Formula One. A true racing enthusiast. Listen, I'm your host, C. Freeze. Joined alongside me today, we have silver class drivers of the Alfa Romeo, Camden Luca, and Chibar. And as always, behind the scenes... Um, our producer behind the scenes, D'Angelo, golden class driver of the Mercedes. We're recording on October 2nd, 2022, and let's get into it. So we had the Singapore Grand Prix, which is the main topic for tonight, but um, how are you guys um, doing, and uh, welcome to the episode. Yeah, it's good to be here. It's been a few weeks since I've been on. I know uh, UC Freeze, obviously, and D'Angelo are here more often than I am, but good to be back, and I do plan on being here more often to the podcast, and yeah, excited to talk about this crazy Singapore race that we had. Yes, yes, and Shabar, welcome, welcome. Thank you, excited to be here. I'm, I'm thinking of taking the first hour off in true Singapore GP fashion. <laughs> Yeah, it was pretty uh, a big difference, 50-50 split. <laughs> um, the race started off really uh, snorefest, and then the second half really picked up. Every Once Hamilton hit the wall, shit hit the fan, and uh, it was really entertaining uh, by then. Um, but um, it's yes, quite so literally about the race delay where they're not letting them race in the wet at all. Oh, oh. now see, this is what... I didn't even, so here's what happened. I always look the day before to see when the race is. And for years, I've always, no matter what the time, I'm a dedicated F1 fan. I'm, I'm going to watch it. I don't care. I've watched the Australian Grand Prix when it was in 3 a.m. or whatever. I'll, I'll, I'll figure out the time and I'll, I'll watch it live. But like way early on when I was first becoming... An F1 fan. I always recorded the races, and then I would get up and not look at my phone or anything. And I would, whenever I get up, then I would start the recording and watch the race. So the last three races I mentioned on the podcast, um, I think was what Dutch. We had uh, Monza and Belgium. To me, I watched them live, but I fell asleep in the middle portion of it because it was just so boring. And then I would come back when Crofty would get all excited. So this Grand Prix, I'm like, all right, I can't miss, I can't sleep in the middle of another one. <laughs> so I had to record it. So I recorded it because it was at 8 a.m. So I'm like, all right, yeah, that's a little steep. I ain't getting up that early for a Singapore Grand Prix. So I did the recording. I hit play. 
and I'm waiting. I'm making my coffee, getting everything ready, you know, ready to sit down. I'm like, the race still isn't start. And then I'm like, oh, oh, there's a little delay. I'm like, oh, I don't know what the delay is for. So I see it's wet and everything. And then it almost, I don't I think 40, almost an hour went by on the recording. <laughs> I was afraid I didn't record enough. Um, on my recording, I'm like, oh, that means I'm going to miss the race or whatever, even though I did extra. But So t for the one race I did record, thinking I could have just, you know, I would have been fine waking up at 9 or whatever. But I didn't really know why the there was a delay in the first place. So was it because it was raining? Uh, I don't know if they ever, like, confirmed that, but I'm pretty sure that's what it was. Um, yeah, I kind of infamously never watch the races live i'd like to not set an alarm i'll wake up whenever i wake up take my time go grab a bagel come back and then start the recording and um today though i i, I didn't have that option today because i was going to go to an nfl game so i was like oh you know what i'll wake up i'll i'll watch the race live with everyone that could be fun so i wake up at 8 a.m i sit down i'm ready i was like okay this isn't so bad. And I turn it on, and this is what I get for waking up. An hour delay. <laughs> I, don't, like, I was annoyed. I took a shower instead. It was, it was frustrating, to say the least. Was it downpouring? Why? I, st I... I don't know. Like, I don't, like, they started on inters an hour later. It's not like it, it suddenly stopped. Yeah, it didn't look, like, drenched on the track. I mean, it looked wet in some spots. But, Hamden, did you watch it live? I was going to say, I can't answer that question because I actually planned to get up at 9 o'clock for the race because I was up a little late last night. And so I'm like, you know what? I'll just set my alarm for 9 o'clock and I'll watch the back half of the race. And so I got up and I saw that they were just getting started. So it's like, wow, I just lucked out big time. Me too. I get to watch the whole race. I got an extra hour of sleep, which I'm so happy about, because I recorded and I'm like, oh, I'll get up around, I got up at like 9.30, 10 o'clock, and I'm like, oh, all right. Yeah, like, last year in Spa, I was so relieved to not wake up for that. Like, I woke up and just, like, <laughs> fast-forwarded through all the hours of delays and saw the three safety car labs. I was like, I'm so glad I don't wake up for this shit. <laughs> and today, not so lucky. And D'Angelo, did you watch it live, or... Or did you do the recording, or you didn't watch it? No, I'm not able to record it because um, in my dorm room we don't have a cable box or anything. So I woke up mm. late, and so I only caught the back, the back end of it still. So ah, uh, okay. So so none of us experienced the live. No. Besides you, Chabor. Yeah, I only experienced the, the last. Never wake up. I only experienced the last twenty minutes. I'm never waking up for a race again. <laughs> I don't blame you after that one. Well, anywho, so so that's I was still confused about it. I don't know why, but they started. I think there's a larger point to, to this yeah. where, I, like, I'm not going to confirm 100, percent but like, all signs point to the delay being because of the rain, and it's like the same thing that happened in Monaco. Like, why have wet tires if you're not gonna if you're just gonna red flag the whole thing and not race on them? Yeah, I don't. I'm always like. It's true because we've had pretty bad conditions in the past um, a few races. Like, I think it's 2016 Brazil was quite wet from what I remember. Uh, we also had um, it's another, uh, like, Turkey in recent years was quite wet. Um, Germany, uh, Hockenheim, 2019. And it's like, yeah, I, I feel like as of late, it's more of, like, they're not really trying to put the cars out in these conditions, which I, I can understand starting a Grand Prix and it being pretty, you know, wet because, you know, they're starting from from the grid, you know, start. They do have an option to do it under behind the safety car to start the race. But I think ideally they don't, you know, they want it to be safe enough to, to start the race. So I can get that, but I didn't see any, you know, torrential downpour at Singapore. So I don't really, and the track didn't seem so damp. So I, I don't really know. Um, I can understand what was the race before a couple races before this that ha that happened at 
Monaco, you say? It happened in Monaco this year. <clears throat> or they oh, did oh, like a formation lap and yeah. then just like, red flagged it immediately. Yeah, they did like an outlap on the formation lap and then it started downpouring. And then, well, at that time you had drivers on like weird tires and stuff. So, you know, they could have been going on dry or intermediates and then all of a sudden, boom, it's, you know, now it's wet. You can't. So I can understand that. But yeah, I don't, I can't, I didn't witness what happened today because I was sleeping. So I really can't say too much, but I think during the race, you know, if it's raining, they should be fine. But the start, I think they have to iron out the start sequence. I think should be their uh... do a rolling start or something. But bring Massey back; he'd let him go. No, <laughs> I disagree. <laughs> <laughs> As a Mercedes fan, I do not want him back. <laughs> he would have let them racing. He would have called the DRS out earlier. Or enabled it. Yeah, well, there's a few things. That there's also, that's one thing. There's also, we'll get later on. But, so, not going to lie. As soon as I, when the actual race started with the fight, when they actually had to delay, the five red lights went off. I was thinking, I'm like, oh, this could be interesting. Because you had, in the top, I want to say top eight. You had a really good mixture of cars. The only double team that had double, you know, both cars in there was Ferrari. But you had a Red Bull, you had a Ferrari, you had a Alpine of Alonso, you had uh, Hamilton and the Mercedes, you had Gasly. Then I think you had uh, Norris, Alonso, Gasly, Vettel. Yeah, so you had the Aston Martin I, I and the, McLaren in there. I have it on right now. I'm on lap ten. I just have it on in the background. There's lap, lap 10 safety car. The top 10 is Perez, Leclerc, Sainz, Hamilton, Norris, Alonso, Gasly, Vettel, Verstappen, Tsunoda. Yeah, it was good. very mixed up. Parody. Yeah, which I like to start. I'm like, oh, this is going to be good because you never really know how it's going to go. But then as soon as I did see that it was intermediate conditions, but it's like not raining, right? So the track's not getting wetter. So it's just going to be a drying track. To me, those are the worst races possible because we kind of saw it today in today's race even though the back half of the race was kind of exciting the first half was not but when when it's intermediate conditions and it's not raining anymore the track's going to be drying and you're only going to have one dry line around the track so once it becomes time for a dry tire you can only run on the dry portion of the track. Meaning if you go for an overtake, you can't pull it off because now you're on a wet track on dry tires because that part portion of the track's not dry yet. So it's just, there's really not much you can do in, in that situation. I, I don't like races that start off wet and just get, it's not even raining. Like the, from the start of the race to the end, it's not raining. But it's a wet surface and it's drying, and it's hard to race on a track like that, especially in Singapore, where it is even harder to begin with. So I'm like, ah, this is going to be, you know, we'll see how it goes. But I generally don't like races like that. I, I, I like it when it's constantly raining or dry, then rains up, and it's better like that because even in the wet, you can do an overtake you know still down the inside just because it's wetter you still have a wet tire on you so it's better in that regard but when i looked at the five red lights and i saw the front picture i could have sworn it was the 2017 start of the race i i literally thought are they doing a replay of the 2017 grid start because it looked like vettel had pole um who was it for stappen in the inside and then Kimmy right behind. <laughs> and I'm like, man, this is, they're all going to crash. Like I've seen, how many times have you seen that Singapore start where they just crash? And it literally looked exactly that. And then it took me a minute to realize, no, this is, this is this season's, this is 22. <laughs> yeah. And they almost did with Hamilton and Science. They made contact in turn one. Yeah, you know, he, went, he like went off the, over that Singapore Airlines inside of the turn, some runoff. 
Yeah, and you had uh, Verstappen uh, with the bog down at the start. That's lost a lot of positions, and then he went into turn one kind of four wide or something. He had to cut the inside, and then he was able to maintain those spots, not which was weird. No one even questioned, oh, Verstappen just cut the course, cut the track completely, and he wasn't pushed off or anything. He just went that way to avoid incident, and no one submitted or said anything about it which i'm like man he kind of i don't know if he gained but he did definitely didn't lose i thought it was i thought it was noted oh, was it wasn't noted it may have been noted it could have been noted sometimes they might not they might have more things noted but they don't show it on the actual uh, broadcast but i think it's one of those like white blurbs at the top of like stewards looking at this and then crofty may have not mentioned it could be could be either way like i think he qualified p8 and then dropped down to 13 on the first lap That's yeah it wasn't good. the best start and it honestly wasn't the best weekend for for max i mean he had an opportunity to clinch the title but they didn't really mention it too much because it was kind of far-fetched and i don't know how many he won in a row but there was talks about oh can max match the record sebastian vettel held with i believe i don't know the exact number was it nine in a row so vettel won nine in a row and What's max nine? was on five races in a row yeah he was so, on a five race winning streak if you know he qual if it really happened in qualifying um on saturday but uh, if he qualified better, he definitely could have had a shot at it. But this race to me was interesting, and not because oh Max didn't win, <laughs> but because you had like a content, um, you had Perez and Leclerc pretty much with each other for the entirety of the race, even though there wasn't really much battling. You still had them connected, so it kept your interest rather than like a. You know, twenty second gap that Max would just go out and win. So, to me, that's what let me uh, still interest in the race. But yeah, Max had uh, an off day for sure. But I think he can clinch next week in um, Jap uh, Japan. Although it might be two weeks. Matt, like Max, off week, like you said, but. He was still kind of the main character today of dropping back, then making up all those spots back, overtaking. He was like the only guy overtaking all day. And then yeah. he had that lockup. Then on the softs, he did it all again. <laughs> yeah, that was towards the more the end of the race when the drivers put the dries on. And he he says that his car bottomed out. Out, which could be true with the tire pressures not really warming up yet. They just came out of the safety car um, restart. But I think it could also be due to the fact that he went to overtake. Who was he overtaking? Lando. Lando. It could have been wet. I mean, it was wet more in the in, inside portion. So I thought, man, this isn't going to end well. But he said he was bottoming out, which could be true. Um, but I think the wet track restart, had... So was, he could have had some cold tires. Yeah. And then I'm like, I saw he was... Like, he, the speed he was going in, I'm like, this ain't gonna work. <laughs> and he flat-spotted the entire thing, went straight. And then um, he pit, and then he was able to come back uh, to finish seventh. Uh, which, you know, was... His up-and-down day, I guess, is good enough position to have. Yeah, I think it was still an impressive showing, even though things weren't going his way. And you also had a lot of... Um, towards the, it was that, that last battle with Max was kind of cool, too. You had Hamilton, Vettel, or Vettel, Hamilton, and Max, and I'm like, oh, this is this is like a good battle, because this that's what reminded me of a few years ago when you know, uh, well, I mean, Max and Hamilton still in their respective teams, but you had uh, Vettel at Ferrari, and uh, those three were like your main number one drivers at the time for for when they were um, up front battling, <laughs> and to see them kind of seventy nine in a wet Singapore race was kind of 
interesting. But Max was able to get well. He he was able to get by Lewis because he made that. Who also had an off day. Uh, went for move on Vettel and kind of locked up and almost took Vettel right out. Uh, but was able to avoid it, and that kind of unleashed Max to then overtake um, Vettel. Because I think in that battle there, Vettel was definitely a slower car, but Hamilton didn't have enough of an advantage to overtake Vettel, and Max didn't have enough advantage to overtake Hamilton. But uh, Verstappen had a big advantage over Vettel to make the move. So it kind of was the the pace kind of was like gradual as far as like Vettel the slower car, Hamilton a little bit quicker and Max was quicker but compared to Hamilton wasn't as quick so he couldn't make the move so once he made the mistake it opened the door for Max to overtake Vettel at the end there, um, like the last lap or something. One of the announcers mentioned that there are twelve championships between those three drivers. And in a couple of races, it's about to be 13 championships. Yes. Which is kind of crazy if you look at, like, man, what does that mean? Okay, 12, now 13. That means 13 seasons of F1, the front runner was one of those three guys. Like, that's pretty cool. And honestly, Max with this Red Bull team could go on and win multi in a row, you know, for the future. Because they started off... Well, last year they had, you know, how that ended. But they're starting this season off in the new era with a strong car. So all that knowledge is going to help them. If they're doing it already, they're going to build that. They have a nice base. So they're going to build on that. And I think they have a nice car. Because at the end of the race, you had, I saw it was Christian Horner, uh, uh, Marco, and um, was that Adrian Newey? who wasn't there for the entirety of Red Bull. Like, didn't he leave and come back? Or was he always there? That technical uh, guy, um, the engineer. I haven't gotten that far in his book yet. I'm still in, like, the 70s. <laughs> okay. But uh, those three guys I saw, I'm like, man, that's like... That could be compared to, like, okay, that's like Toto, Bono, and... Uh, you know, was that other guy like James Allison or something? <laughs> or I think that's his name, maybe. I'm not too sure. But like, as far as uh, the Mercedes years, it was always, or it could have been Niki Lauda too in the Mercedes days. Um, as far as like faces of the team, um, you know, Toto and, and that dominance at Mercedes. And you look at those three, and it's kind of like, you know, the Red Bull days back in the day when you had Vettel uh, and their success in, in that era. So, you know, we could be looking at, you know, a lot of Max winning in the future. Some might not like that, but Definitely. Hey. It's a, a combination of a team with the best car in a new generation with the money to keep up that development and potentially the most talented driver on the grid. It's a great formula. Just got to keep it up. A little too much money. <laughs> Who's got too much money? Red Bull. The, the cap issue. What's that? Uh, they, they, there's rumors that two teams, one of them possibly being Red Bull, allegedly overspent last year. Mm. But maybe. Who knows? Who's they, need a, they need an auditor. I, I think I know one. If we get an, a, a new uh, auditor, and bring them in. They probably had... Uh, an internal guy do the books. <laughs> yeah, but when you look at like Ferrari or like another team like uh, that, there's coming up like uh, looking to you know either McLaren, Alpine, Aston Martin. Do you see uh, like any of those teams having like those three guys? Like I mentioned, you had Total Wolf, you had Bono, you know Nicky Lauda when he was still alive, or uh, James uh, James another technical engineer on Mercedes. Like, you knew those faces when the camera went to them. Ferrari's got Spinato, Bonato, Clown yeah, Show. Bonato's the only guy mm -hmm. I know. In there. And, uh, I mean, yeah, it's, it hasn't been good. Like, I guess he's a technical guy, so maybe he can deserve some of the credit for it being the second fastest car on the grid, but 
uh, they're like just they're incompetent. Their management has been inconsistent. Their strategies keeps getting it wrong. It doesn't look yeah. good. Something Man. needs to change at yeah. Ferrari. I think it's just a disaster. Like they have so much potential to not only win more races, but I think next year, if they can, you know, fix everything, Leclerc can be right there with Max. I believe. Mm. Mm-hmm. Oh, absolutely. But you know, I think that's what's lacking. Is like you look at Red Bull and you saw those three guys there. After I'm like, man, that's. You know, it takes the top, it starts at the top and works its way down. Like, who, you know, you have Bonato and that's it. Everyone else is like, you say Giuseppe in the in the garage and like five people turn. You know what I mean? <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you need a guy that's going to stand out, not all equals, if that makes sense. So they need to kind of change something. Although they had a good day. The first time both Ferrari drivers on the podium since Miami, which seems forever ago that was back in the spring we're in the fall now that was chuck chuck there chuck leclerc <laughs> yeah i mean that was the last time so i thought they had a good uh good race today um leclerc sticking with perez for the entirety um just he had a couple moments here and there towards the end of the race but it would have been you know a very difficult overtake to do but you know, I don't think they had any problems. It was a well executed race. It really started at the start when Perez had the better uh they both had the same reaction time from what the graphic showed on on the broadcast, but uh Perez had better in the second stint of acceleration getting up towards turn one and he had the inside, so uh once he had that he had great control of the race and uh Ferrari really couldn't do something different. You know, the only thing downside, I guess you could say, is when Leclerc did come in to do the pit stop to actually go in the dry tire, uh, he overstepped his pit sto- stop a little bit. So the engineers had to kind of realign themselves and they lost some time there, uh, which you know took the threat of an undercut away uh, to get Perez. But other than that, they had a pretty strong race, and uh, Perez was like really on it today. I was pretty impressed. And he has been on it at street courses specifically, so it doesn't surprise me that he won today. You know, it's just that's something I think we can look forward to you know max verstappen he wins all the time but when it comes to these street courses i think skill wise i think perez is right there yeah i believe that all three of perez's wins have come at a street track that leclerc had pull on (laughs) well i mean everybody else wins except leclerc when leclerc is on pole you know he never wins from pole position yeah there was like a at one point earlier in the season, there was like a perfect inverse of Max pulls versus Leclerc pulls, and then Max wins and Leclerc wins. This um this isn't his first win of the year, right? He had one earlier in the season. Monaco and oh yeah, yeah, that was a big one. Wait, did he win Baku this year? I think, uh, I know it was, was last, last year. year. Um, Another street course. I think it might have just been Monaco. I don't know if someone could look that up. He yeah, won Baku. Uh, he won Baku last year. He's only won yeah, two Max races won this year. year. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's exactly what you want if you're Red Bull. Is like, all right, Max had an off day. Okay. That's fine. We still won with Perez. So <laughs> that's exactly what you want. They're doing. You know, when Max doesn't win, Perez is kind of there. You know, he won the biggest kind of the biggest race of the year. Monaco, I guess you could say, still um, up there as far as prestige. And getting uh, Singapore, which is one of the toughest races of the year. So having the prestige and, and toughness is uh, pretty good. Because he didn't really do any mistakes. He just kind of controlled it. And uh, I think at one point, Brundle or Croft, he might have said, oh, you know, you know, he... He knows how to win Grand Prix and he knows not to make any mistakes, but like 
he doesn't have that much experience, right, in those conditions. Like, those are kind of one-off conditions. A, a wet track, intermediate going to dry at Singapore after, like, a two-week break is is not something you do every on the weekends. <laughs> it's not so normal, so, like, it's very easy to do a mistake, but, you know, he, he did it pretty good. Now, the one thing we can really get into is... Did they announce if he's getting a penalty or not, or did they say nothing yet? Sergio yeah. got a five-second penalty for the first safety car infringement. They deemed the second one, because he got two, the second one deemed no penalty, so he has he won the race. Now, what were the two infringements for? Both. I think, I know the first one was he dropped behind the required ten car lengths behind the safety car, and I think the second one was that too. So he dropped further than 10 car lengths behind. Okay, so it was like, okay. Um, so I agree with a penalty. I don't agree with F1 saying, oh, let's wait till after the race, because if Perez got that five second there, Leclerc would have done everything to stay within five seconds, and then he would have uh, won the race. So to, to wait after the fact, then the stewards say, oh, well, if we give him a 10 second, you know, that's going to demote him. So let's give him a five. So he still gets a penalty, but it doesn't affect him. Because they yeah. they all watch the race. They know the gaps. I think applying a, doing a time penalty after the race should really never be, if, at least if you're F1, because... You don't. You have the ability to give a penalty right then and there, like at league racing. Like we have no other choice but to do it post race. Uh, but I think F one should kind of, if they are going to do these things, say okay, uh, a penalty for a safety car infringement of ten car lanes or more is X penalty. So then after the race, there's no oh, what do we feel like tonight? Five or a ten. It's just whatever it is. Yeah, there was like, it wasn't a total mystery mid race either. Like I remember they meant, I think they told Checo that there's a possible penalty, and then he floored it and tried to just extend the gap as much as he can. Um, but I also agree that I don't like post race penalties because like, I think Carlos Sainz's first podium came after someone got a penalty so like he wasn't even on the podium mm. he, he just like celebrated in the paddock with his garage after the race brazil was it brazil and the mclaren a few um, years ago sounds right something like that yeah um yeah no i i agree with that and then also i think that um well it's just had it and then i lost it what was i gonna say I don't know. About penalties after the race. Carlos podium. Oh yeah, so this other thing that I saw I, and it was very um noticeable during the race was that number one, it did seem like he was way far back. Perez was way far back from the safety car because you had when they actually went back green the top six were kind of together, but the entire grid was so far back, and that's because of the Constantine effect. Uh, he would go, stop, go, stop, and by the time the other drivers start to go get going again, they're just so far back from the pack when they cross the star finish line. So I saw that for sure, and I agree with a penalty. I don't agree with the way that was done. Um, but also, another thing is, which would get me a penalty if I did a save or anyone that saved go restart in uh, TCR in our, in the league is you can't release and say, go if this pit, uh, if the safety car is not in the pit lane. So I think it was the last safety car restart Perez started going and the safety car was still on the entrance of the pit lane, which in, if you did that in the um, you know league racing in the game, it would limit you because you can't go until the safety car is in the pit lane. 
and that could cause problems because if you go and then the game stops you and you know for league racing standards it would stop you and then everyone else would crash and then who would get the penalty the guy who's you know who started initiated that start so i thought that could have been looked at as well because the safety guard was not it was still like turning the corner and you see perez slamming and you know he's already going so i thought that could have been an infringement but i guess it was just the 10 car lengths did you guys see that or no nope yeah not really in real time like i think it was a lewis a radio that they pulled up that um, he was pulling a gap before the car's lights were off. Something along those lines. Mm, yeah, because they have the lights on top of the safety car, too. Yeah. Well, sounds like they were close enough to the safety car to re see the lights. <laughs> I guess so, yeah. So, I, I felt like that's another thing F1 could do better at, is that whole post penalty and stuff but another one during the race which i was kind of thinking about and i'm like is there a better way to do this a vsc that goes out vsc oh it's a vsc all right people drivers have to go to the delta and then it just kind of randomly goes it'll start to say it'll say vsc ending soon or ending and then it just kind of goes randomly and Max was behind Lando mm. and tried to time it correctly because, and, and they both were, I'm assuming they both went way under the Delta so that they gave themselves enough time to just start going. And they, I'm, I'm assuming got the Delta all the way down to by close to the, uh, close to the red, but not quite. And it was still under VSC, so they kind of had to back off it. And Max almost passed Norris under VSC conditions, which is, number one, dangerous. And number two, you have drivers now going way below the delta so that they can go, just go at full speed conditions. Which, if you're under a VSC, you have to adhere to the delta. But if you slow more, it'll give you time on the delta, then you could just go full speed. So it's like, oh, these drivers are still going at full speed, but they're fine because they're still within the delta, which I see as kind of a flaw. It's like, okay, I can go, if I have to be 40% slower, okay, well, I'll be 90% slower, and then I'll gain a, oh, I can gain like 5, 10 seconds on, in the green, and then I could just go flat out, and then I'm still fine because I'm still in the delta. So, I, is there a better way? I was thinking to yeah. an, announce the VSC's ending. Like, is there a countdown? Is it out of you know once this, the leaders finish uh, crosses the start finish line or something? I think it should be similar to the safety car restarts, to where you um you go either like right at the finish line or like the corner before, you know. And it's hard because, like, not everybody is all together during a VSC. So it's not like, you know, the leader kind of, like, can go and then everybody else can go. Like, that's one of the loopholes, I think, with the virtual safety car. Um, and I think it's a good... I think VSCs are good. I think it serves a purpose. But it could definitely be improved. I'm, I'm thinking, like, as you're describing the issue with it, what if... A VSC act as kind of like a pit limiter, like mm. set it to sixty percent or whatever, and have like that cap on what you can actually do. So there's no ability to like drop back and then get up to speed, trying to time it out if you're capped until it actually is green. Yeah, no, I agree with that. I agree with the delta. I agree with. Maybe, maybe I think the best way, instead of doing the last corner, because not every driver can see that, just say, safety guard's ending soon, and then, I don't know, I don't know if there's a way, because there's, when a VSC comes up on their dash, on that driver's dash, it comes up VSC, and they have their delta, 
which is imposed by you know FIA or Formula One or whatever that is, the stewards and everything. Why can't they say VSC ending soon, and then within ten seconds or so they have a count on five, four, three, two, one, and then green? This way, people know. Okay, it's coming, and then they can time in rather than guessing. Start like. It would be safer, which, you know, not many things happen under VSC, but you never know. But you're 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 taking out that gimmick of uh like it's supposed to be a VSC, it's supposed to be safe and slow, yet you have people going like flat out, literally first <laughs> happen and Norris were going like full speed down the straight because they had a lot on their delta and then all of a sudden they jammed on the brakes and you know, Verstappen almost passed them. Like, why go through all that? Just make it more defined. You know, a, just a little countdown could be like a, the opposite of a yellow traffic light. Like, you know the red's coming, you know green's coming. Oh, yeah. I like the traffic light. Go from, <laughs> like, red, yellow, green. <laughs> it's like, what's that game? You you run and uh, stop, stop. Uh, oh, what's it called? Red light, you... green light. Yeah, red light, green light. Yeah, something like that. And just that turn doesn't around. Work here. That doesn't, that's what they're currently doing. There needs to be a yellow. I think in like some other countries, maybe in Europe, the yellow light comes on before green. I've seen that somewhere. Oh, yeah. Oh, be, to let them know. Yeah. That it's coming. Yeah, no, that, that, that does too. But sometimes if you're at the light stoplight, you, you can see the other stoplight from yeah. the other direction and say, oh, it's yellow. So then you start getting ready. <laughs> That's like, I don't know how many, uh, how many people drive. Um, I got, you know, I'm ready. I'm revving up. I'm like, all right. That's my opportunity. That's my chance to... to, to engine modes. To, to really, yeah, put it in in sport. Take the um, eco mode off. Get a few extra <laughs> horsepower. Get the windshield wipers going. Seafreeze. <laughs> Those are not the places to practice your TCR starts. Ah, maybe that's why I suck at them. <laughs> it doesn't <laughs> translate. But I mean, I don't know how many people listen do that, but I definitely do. I look at it and I try to time it, and then then I then I give myself like a distance mark. I look and I'm like, all right, first one to pass the the telephone pole. Right next to the deli, right over there. And it's like only a couple hundred. And you, you know, if you oh, don't beat. Yeah, of course. You know, nothing. Of course, of course. You got, you know, but you got to beat the soccer mom a, a minivan, right? Yeah. I mean, you can't lose to that. The Prius. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, I think they could do something better there. But um, who else? So. McLaren. Yes, let's go to McLaren. They got they, really lucky. Very, yeah, was it, how much was it luck? How much was it, like, an overcut strategy that they, I guess it was a safety car that fell their way, right? Like, because they just stayed on an extra lap and benefited from it. Yeah, I think, it, well, I mean, they definitely want to do the overcut. So, in that regard, it was planned. But they can't plan, oh, a safety car is coming. But, you right. can kind of infer that okay, maybe there will be a safety car coming because of the conditions, right? Because that time you had drivers going from the uh, intermediate, as we lost Chabar. Um, <laughs> it's his bedtime. Oh, it's his bed. He's signed. He's logging up. off. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we'll give it a moment. We'll give it a moment. Chabar, yeah. he, he likes to go to bed early. Earlier than us. Oh, never mind. What happened? You signed off? No, I don't know. My my laptop just restarted on me. Sorry. <laughs> it was like the uh, Alpine's reliability today. Just turned off. <laughs> yeah, my, my computer just pulled an Alpine. <laughs> I'm on my phone now. I'm on the... Just I'm out of fuel. I had to use the battery to get back to the pit lane. Right, right. Is your, is your laptop like Nicholas Latifi? It just uh, crashes. No, it's like Alonzo's power unit. <laughs> uh, I forgot what was I. We're talking oh about yeah, McLaren. McLaren. Yeah. So um, yeah, in that situation when the safety car, or in that period when the drivers were starting to come in, 
they they know they're going now to dry tire on a wet-ish surface so there's a high probability that a safety car will be coming so teams who did do an extra outlap definitely had that in the equation of oh there's a po high possibility that a safety car would come out and for those going an extra lap you know could benefit so teams later on like ricardo was outside the top 10 i believe at the time like okay you might as well do an extra you know stay out because if we do get lucky do catch that safety car then you do gain that track position which was it enabled him to get uh was it p5 yeah if he went p16 to p5 so i it could be it's not a lock i would say it's kind of in the equation i think that was formulated for sure yeah it was a calculated risk i remember one of the mclarens got a radio message from the pits about just like we're trying to make these inters last as long as possible and what they mean behind that could be like if we stay out on these long enough someone could crash and there could be a safety car and then we're golden and that's how it played out yeah so they definitely had a good one another team who had a good day was aston martin double yeah. points finish for them and i was actually kind of happy to see them in there because i always i like um, i like haas as well as an american team um but also, if I, I'm thinking about F1 in the competition, looking forward, I always want a, a good, strong team to be up there. Aston Martin's plans is to be one of those teams. Haas is kind of, I don't see them ever being that, just based off their um, development and all the outside factors that lead to it. But Aston Martin moved up in the constructor's table, um, as did, I think, McLaren, beating Alpine. I believe. And, uh, you know, that's good for... Um, Oscar Piastri. Yeah, and it's also good for Alonso if you're looking, okay, Alpine's having all these reliability problems and Al Aston Martin just moved up to sixth. The only team in between them is, I think, the Alfa Romeo, which isn't really on a good tra tra trajectory. So Aston Martin, if they can keep this up, could possibly finish fifth. And then Alonso's just going one team below rather than a few weeks ago when he made the move. We're like, ah, he's going to Aston Martin. They're miles off, but they're <laughs> consistent and they're finishing races, I think. So I think they had a really strong day. Um, Alpine definitely did not. Both cars were liability, <clears throat> as mentioned. And uh, the Williams team didn't have a strong day. And also the rookies. Uh, you had um, Sonoda crashing out, which caused all that. Um, who else? Not a rookie, uh, though. Eh, uh, Joe, he drives Joe like would a, be, I guess, yeah. But Joe I mean, got, Sonoda, yeah. Joe got Latifi. He got Latifi. I'm so happy he's not in the season next year. Um, I back to SMR for a second. Like, it's nice to see the British Racing Green doing well, uh, as it probably should and hasn't been. But I just never like seeing Stroll in the points. Pretty much just because of that one comment he made that I think was on Drive to Survive. There's like big points in the bag. I just hated that. I don't like the guy. I think he gets too much hate. If you look at his results this season, he actually hasn't been too bad. No. I didn't say he was bad. I just don't like him. Yeah, no, I, mean, I agree with that. He's not great either. He's, he's super average. Like he's, he's, if there's a Mendoza line in F1, it, it might be Stroll. I think he's actually, I, when he was back at Williams, I thought he was kind of highly regarded quite nicely. You remember he got uh, that podium at uh, Baku, um, but he just got pipped by Botas at, at the line. <laughs> and it was many years that he didn't really have to um, have the car and everything and other factors too. But I think he's does pretty decent i don't like his personality i think he <laughs> seems i think he's very disrespectful and uh, very like oh i don't want to be here or he feels like very like oh my dad owns the team i could do what i want type of thing and uh he just doesn't come off right to me but i think he's solid i think alonzo <laughs> stroll would be interesting um and yeah the last thing i just want to note was um mercedes uh, Russell spent the entire race as the guinea pig. 
Crikey. I thought that was quite interesting to see him just uh, being at the back and getting all his intel. He's like, I'm going to go to the dry tire. It's not working, but I'm going to stay until it does. And <laughs> as, as soon as Hamilton, Hamilton made a mistake because he was trying to get past Sainz, which, you know, is in these conditions. I mean, you're going to, I mean, even Max was making mistakes. You know, everyone was making all, all mistakes. Lucky. Hamilton's the luckiest son of a bitch, I tell you. He, whenever he crashes, he doesn't crash. The car never goes away. And he just keeps going. Like, remember that time, uh, last season, it was Imola. Imola. He, Imola. He goes straight. He's still good. He's still good. At and up he got to, the safety car right after that. Yes, and he came back right away. There was a few years ago at um, Hockenheim, uh, 2019. He spins at turn one. Doesn't hit the wall. Botas does the same exact thing. The next few laps later, he spins turn one and he hits the wall and he's out. <laughs> Hamilton is just so lucky in that regard. He Hamilton, goes straight on into the wall. Oh, just change the never wing. breaks. He like he. It looked like he hit the wall harder than Albon. Albon hobbled back to the pits with no wing. Hamilton's tried got black and orange flagged. I think because he tried to stay out on how little damage he had. It was crazy. crazy. It, he's got so much he luck. He just made one mistake. He made two mistakes. Yeah. Is Lewis washed? I mean, hey, I was about to say, I mean, Lewis historically has not crashed out. He historically has not made mistakes. But this year, man, there's been a lot, especially on the start. There's been a handful of races where he has just screwed up. And I noticed, like... Even last season, there was a couple of mistakes. I mean, he was great last season, obviously, but um, I I'm starting to get on the train that Lewis um, is declining a little bit. That's uh, just I, my I, opinion. I, I disagree. I think the uh, I think the equipment's obviously gotten worse, and um, there's the mistakes he's doing is still. It's like he doesn't have the the car to fight for you know for him obviously it doesn't mean you could just still spin off and everything but uh well i mean like the, it, i don't think the car dictates like him running into alonzo at belgium or like in uh the netherlands where he got into a mistake there yeah and then uh here like at Singapore, he made a few mistakes uh, i think there's something else um in spain i don't think quit. Yeah, like Spain, I don't think that was his fault, but like, yeah, he, he just said, you know, oh, let's pack it up, but he ended up getting a top five finish, you know? Like, there's just been a lot of stuff that's happened that's been uncharacteristic of him. And he's been, like, he's been getting outperformed by Russell. I know he's kind of been the, uh, the, the test dummy for the team, but I just, you know, I'm a Lewis Hamilton fan. I, I watch him closely. I just don't think he's the same driver that he was last year or the year before. Yeah, I think I think the main factor is there's really no motivation as far as week to week because the win isn't on the table, so it's a different type of motivation, right? It's a m motivation to improve the team, which comes week to week, and that takes some time, which you know a, a lot of a lot of people don't like. I mean, you look obviously Vettel's leaving because he doesn't want to see a long term project at Aston Martin, you know Hamilton. This is his first year in a long time that he doesn't have a car to compete for a world championship. So it's a different type of motivation. And, you know, not that he's not just, you know, I think you're more zoned in when you're at that high top level. And, you know, when you're a little farther back, you maybe try a little too hard. Um, but that could also be good because maybe these things that he's trying is you know, making them improve uh, by learning. But it did seem also throughout this race, he was like complaining that he was always on the wrong tire. It's like, Lewis, everyone else is on the same tire. Mm -hmm. what tire I heard that. We only, like, what tires do you want to go on? We don't have the, you know, we don't have the super softs like, anymore. Want, the high in softs. <laughs> early in this race, he said something about the tires when everyone was on inters. And there was yeah, some speculation, does he mean the wets? But then I think the broadcast seems to land on, he was talking about tire pressures, maybe? He wanted to be on the wet tires at the start. 
And apparently the team told him no, but it seems like the team was correct in, you know, telling him no. Like, he, he maybe, maybe gets passed to Ferrari in the first few laps, but I think he'd lose that and have to pit much sooner. As we're talking about this on my rewatch, it's the comment he made about how slow science is and that he's losing so much time. Has he considered trying to get past him? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a good point. I, I could I could be Bono. <laughs> yeah, he'd be complaining, oh, science is so slow. Yeah, okay, pass him then. <laughs> <laughs> you could do it. <laughs> Question. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, we uh, suggest getting past him. Yes. Push, push. <laughs> um, so yes. Yeah, so uh, quick. Um, I think we kind of hit all my bullet points. Um, we'll have to um, go to the uh, race review of today's race um race rating i guess you could say in the past we did we used to do five stars but i don't really i've come away from the star method i think i like one through Mm. ten or better okay so Mm. what are we what are we rating it i'm trying to think of a rating system you want to do one through ten yeah what do you what do you think one through ten or five is ten good or like p1 or I give it a P four. <laughs> no, no, Jabbar. What 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 scale system do you know that one is good out of a one through ten basis? Uh, positions golf. Uh, all right, <laughs> let's just we could do a ten means the best. Yes, yes. I'll try and think. Of, I want. I'm not satisfied. For next week, I'm going to try and think of a better system. Um, <laughs> I give this race. Hmm. Let's say if. I'm going to go off of five being an average race. I'll give this six and a half. Like, I think things happened. It wasn't, it wasn't a particularly pleasing race. Maybe it's because Max didn't win and I'm a fan of his, but like there was like Perez and Leclerc paraded in the front. Everything that happened was like just driver after driver going into the wall and like, it's just it was a weird race the the start being delayed the DRS not being enabled sooner it left more to be desired but like ultimately things did happen so i think it's a, an above average race fair camden yeah i'll be a little more uh beneficial towards the race i'll give it a 7 i'll go right above your 6 and a half chabar i give it a 7 because I think I like the fact that the drivers were able to adapt and, you know, it kind of made it crazy in that regard because like the conditions were changing throughout the race. But I like that. I think it definitely puts drivers under pressure. The reason I'm not putting this rating any higher is because of all the crashes and the fact that the drivers were making all of those mistakes. So that's just not my cup of tea. I don't like seeing all those crashes and the, all the virtual safety cars and in the safety car that we had. So I'll give it a seven. That's still a pretty good rating. And D'Angelo, any uh, thoughts on your rating? Um, mainly because I only saw the end of the race. I'm giving it a seven and a half because that's the only part I saw. Okay. Well, the best part for sure. <laughs> yeah. um, but if you, if I were to combine the first half and the second half, I, I, if I'm going to go on the one through 10 basis, five being average, I'm going to say seven being solid you know, 10 being, you know, perfect, I would say six. It was slightly above average race if you look at all the factors there. So I'm going to give it a six. The first half was a little too slow pace for me, lapping at almost two minutes. Uh, it was not enough action um, for a Grand Prix. So uh, I think, when is the Japan race is next? Max has next a chance it's, to it's clinch this, it. It's this coming weekend. Oh, okay. So we'll maybe... Have an episode review of that. That should be interesting at uh, Japan. Haven't been racing there since, I think, 2019. So that'll be uh, cool to see. Uh, if you're in the TCR Discord server or a member, uh, we might do a watch party because that's pretty... Uh... It, that's starts like... At like, it starts at like 2 a.m. on the East Coast, I think. Okay, I'll be 1 a.m. East Coast. 1 a.m. So we could do 1 a.m. Should be one to three. Um, 
and I know we're, we're, we've got to wrap this up currently, but this, so this is a conversation for another day. I want to just, I want to establish the Mendoza line for formula one. For those unfamiliar with the Mendoza line, it's kind of, it's named after a baseball player, Mendoza, which is kind of the minimum acceptable threshold. Any, he had like a 200 batting average, anything below that unacceptable. So maybe anyone worse than Lance Stroll, unacceptable. And if anyone has ideas for who that driver could be, leave it in the comments. Max Verstappen. <laughs> oh, These no. guys are frauds. <laughs> <laughs> we got to find new uh, company here. Um, we'll try to get some more people on the podcast, as always, um, for maybe next episode. Uh, so let me know if you're interested. Um, but for now, uh, that'll do it for this week. Um, make sure to follow TCR on all socials and join the TCR Discord server where we are the most active. And until next week, uh, from Camden, Luca, Jabbar, D'Angelo, and myself, Sue Freeze, uh, we'll see you. Uh, obviously, we're off this week from TCR. We'll come back in another week's time. And uh, we'll see you then. Thank you for listening.